We've got some big news to share about the Samsung Galaxy Note 20, and that's coming up right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links in the description. So this week we've got plenty more leaks about the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and of course we're going to be covering it all. We've had full camera specs along with rumours of an in-display selfie camera, news of the Galaxy Note 20's fast charger and finally confirmation of the release date. Before we get into it though, please like the video if you're a fan of the Galaxy Note series and let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 or the Note 20 Ultra. For those unaware, we will of course be getting two models of the Galaxy Note 20, which is going to be the standard Note 20 and the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. It was initially thought that the larger model was going to be called the Galaxy Note 20 Plus, but more leaks are starting to point towards this being called the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Ice Universe told us this weekend that the Galaxy Note 20 is going to launch of the 5th of August alongside the Galaxy Fold 2 and others. This is great news considering many were expecting delays and it means the Galaxy Note 20 is now less than two months away. Of course, it is important to note that this isn't confirmation, but Ice Universe is a reliable source. Next up, we've got news of an in-display selfie camera on the Samsung Galaxy Note 20. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like this is the case, and it's actually just rumors because someone else has promoted it. Chinese company Visionox have announced mass production of the in-display selfie camera and given us this teaser to showcase the hardware. We're unsure what phone this will appear in first, but it's definitely not going to be the Galaxy Note 20. Samsung will, of course, be using their in-display camera technology from Samsung. Samsung displays and it's expected to debut in the Galaxy S21 and not the Note 20. Ice Universe did also give us full camera specs for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. He advises that the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is going to be using a 108 megapixel HM1 as the primary sensor, and this is a 1 over 1.33 inch sensor that was, of course, seen in the S20 Ultra. We also get a 13 megapixel periscope lens with a 1 over 3.4 inch sensor, and finally, we've got the 12 megapixel ISO cell, which is a 1 over 2.55 inch sensor. The Galaxy Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is also not going to have a time of flight depth sensor, but it's instead going to have an additional laser focus sensor. This is of course to fix the auto focusing issue we saw on recent models. The zoom has also been reduced from 100 times to 50 times, but of course users can zoom further in post. While we haven't had the fast charging capabilities of the Galaxy Note 20 confirmed, it appears they'll be packaged with a 25 watt fast charger. The news is from the 3C certification, but it's important to note that it doesn't mean it's its max capability. It's actually the same as the predecessor, so it's likely they've just used the same adapter to save on their manufacturing costs. Of course, we've also had CAD leaks for the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra, and they've also been used to create stunning 3D renders. Now we're going to run through all of them. For my regular viewers, you guys have already seen this, so just skip to the next video. But if you're new here, then don't forget to hit subscribe, and we're going to get right into it. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 is coming with a 6.7 inch AMOLED display with a punch hole selfie camera top center. While many were hoping for the in-display selfie camera, it's not going to happen and it's most likely going to be for the S range. The dimensions come in at 161.8 by 75.3 by 8.5 millimeters, which makes the Note 20 one millimeter thicker than its predecessor and significantly larger overall. One thing that you may have already noticed is a flat display on the Note 20. I'm assuming this is going to please a lot of you, as one of my most complained about features in the comments is of course the curved display. You can see that on the Note 20 we've got the volume and the home buttons on the right hand side, leaving the left side completely clear. If we take a look underneath, we've got USB Type-C port, a microphone, a speaker grill and the S Pen at the far left. The SIM tray is now located at the top of the Galaxy Note 20. On the rear, we've got a rectangular camera module similar to the S range and it's 38.1mm long by 21.9mm wide. Samsung are reportedly still working on these cameras, so we don't have any confirmation on what they're going to be, but it's expected it will contain either the HM1 or the GN1 from Samsung. We can of course see that we've got three lenses on the left, with a periscope lens on the right underneath the LED flash. 
You can see the back panel is curved on both edges, we've got slight curves on all corners and overall it looks like a comfortable device to hold and still a very premium smartphone. Next up we've got my favourite which is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Plus. These renders were provided by Pigtow and OnLeaks and while we have most of the details there's still some unconfirmed information. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Plus is coming with a larger 6.9 inch curved AMOLED display and we've got a punch hole camera top centre. We've had plenty of display leaks from Ross Young but he has since deleted the tweets so we can only assume there's an issue or he's been asked to remove them. We're expecting an LTPO display but again we've got the punch hole selfie camera as in display cameras just aren't ready yet. The Note 20 Plus dimensions come in at 165 by 77.2 by 7.6 millimeters, but with the trim down bezels, it is pretty much all screen. We've got the volume and power buttons on the right hand side, with the left completely smooth. The bottom layout is the same as the Note 20, with the S Pen at the far left, followed by speaker, USB port, and microphone. On the rear we've got another rectangular camera housing but you can see it is a little bit different from the smaller Note 20 and I have to say I much prefer this one. It looks a little bulky with bigger lenses but I actually really like these camera rings and I think it adds to the premium look of the device. We've got two cameras on the left which reportedly could be the Samsung HM1 and the GN1 and we've got the periscope lens underneath. Over on the right hand side you can see a true depth camera underneath the LED flash. Again the edges are curved on the back and overall it looks like it's going to be a great device. We still haven't had any details on the pricing and probably won't until closer to the launch towards the end of the year but it's going to be interesting to see where they price it. The Note line is always the most premium of the range, well apart from the newly added Fold, but the S range was priced relatively high and it sold less than expected so this could affect the pricing on the Note. One thing we do know though is that with the Note we'll get improved display, battery, camera and general hardware and of course we don't have much longer until it's going to be released. Now we're going to run through all of the specs of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and the Note 20 Plus but for my regular viewers you guys have already seen it so I suggest you switch off now but if you're new here then don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll get right into it. Of course the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 is going to be an incredible smartphone and actually one of my favourite releases this year. We'll likely see improved design, display, cameras and more but for anyone who's missed my previous videos we're going to quickly run through what we can expect. For my regular viewers you would have already seen this so just switch off now but for anyone new here we're going to run through everything we know so far about the Samsung Galaxy Note 20. While well, the Note was always much bigger than the S range in the past, things have been changing lately so it's going to be interesting to see what screen sizes we get with the Galaxy Note 20. Last year we had the Note in two sizes which was 6.3 inch and 6.8 inch displays. We then had a light model come later with a 6.7 inch display. Given that the S range has massively increased in size with a 6.9 inch display now coming, I'm going to estimate that we could see a Galaxy Note 20 with at least a 7 inch display. Now of course smartphone sizes are generally getting larger so phablet sizes are going to rise too. Given the success of last year's notes, I'm also going to predict that we'll be getting a Galaxy Note 20 along with a Galaxy Note 20 Plus. We haven't had any solid leaks or information when it comes to displays but I'm going to predict a 6.5 inch display on the Galaxy Note 20 and a 7 inch display on the Galaxy Note 20 Plus. I'm expecting both models to be 1440 by 3200 resolution and that will be a 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display. We're no doubt going to see an in-display fingerprint scanner along with Gorilla Glass 6 for protection. Now when it comes to the selfie camera, the Note line actually led the innovation for Samsung last year. It's going to be interesting to see whether they stick with the punch hole camera top center or if the Galaxy Note 20 comes with a new design altogether. Many are curious whether in-display cameras are going to be available for consumers and when Samsung have this technology ready. My guess would be introducing it on the Note line but unfortunately the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 is probably a little bit too early for this tech and it's likely going to be something we see in 2021. When it comes to the rear of the Samsung Galaxy Note 11 or the Galaxy Note 20 as it may be called, I've got no doubts that we're going to see a rectangular camera housing. Samsung have stuck with this across their mid-range and their flagships this year so the Note 20 should be no different. 
Samsung have also been getting a lot more adventurous with their cameras, so I'm going to predict that we'll get a 108 megapixel isocell sensor with pixel binning technology. We'll get a periscope lens with some incredible zoom capabilities, we'll get an ultra wide angle for those wide shots, and we'll also get a 3D time of flight depth sensor. We'll also no doubt see better camera sensors on the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Plus compared to the standard Note 20. In the hardware department, we know the Galaxy Note 20 is going to be powered by the Snapdragon 865 in North America and the Exynos 990 globally. We'll see up to 512 gigs of internal storage with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and it will of course be expandable with a micro SD card. Given the larger size, the Galaxy Note 20 Plus is expected to have a battery capacity of 5,200 mAh, while the Galaxy Note 20 is going to be around 4,300. Of course, both Galaxy Note 20s are going to be running Android 10 in the form of One UI 2, and it will be IP68 water resistant. The Galaxy Note 20 is expected to come with stereo speakers and no 3.5mm headphone jack, and most importantly for Note fans, it will be coming with the much loved S Pen using Bluetooth 5. We haven't had any leaks on the upcoming S Pen, but it's no doubt going to be more refined with new hardware and software features. The Galaxy Note 20 is set to be an incredible device and judging by recent years we can expect the Galaxy Note 20 to launch at the start of August 2020 and release towards the end of the month. When it comes to pricing, it will of course be an expensive device. Prices are expected to start at about $1100 to $1200 for the standard Note 20 and around $1400 to $1500 for the Galaxy Note 20 Plus or Galaxy Note 20 Ultra as it may also be called. Given the success of this year's light models, it's also likely that we'll get a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Lite released further down the line. It's a great time to be a Samsung fan with so many phones being released by the company. We've got a huge selection in the A range, the Premium S and the Note line on top of the Galaxy Fold and the Galaxy Z Flip phone. Now I have to say the Z Flip phone is the only one that doesn't really excite me, but that's just because I see it as a little bit unnecessary. It's sort of trying to solve a problem that isn't really there in the first place and being overcomplicated for very little reason. Of course, that's just my opinion though, and I'm sure it will be a successful phone being priced much lower than the Fold. Of course, that's all the information and estimates we have today, but as soon as any solid information comes to light, I'll be sharing with you guys straight away. But I just wanted to give you my estimations along with these stunning renders that concept artists have already brought together. As always though, I'd like to know your guys thoughts in the comments. Who out there is waiting for the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and are you waiting for the Galaxy Note 20 or the Note 20 Ultra? But thanks for watching the video, if you liked it smash a thumbs up, if you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.